What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. It is now Monday, which means it's exhaust day. So, um, grab some stuff. What's in there? Well, it's just got clamps. We don't need that yet. So, what we're doing, um, I do have the exhaust that I made, which is very lovely and I do like it, but I need one that's quieter. So, um, we is going to be going with something like that. Uh, I'm picking this one over the other one just because this one's got a DB killer in it as well. I can't find the DB killer for the other one. Um, I'm going to get a DB killer just, just so I can try it. But that's got one for now. And they're basically the same length and everything else. So it, you know, it won't really matter. Right, let's um, grab a brew, have a sit down, look at it. And we'll try and figure something out, eh? Right, so this is just an old link pipe off. What was it off? Was that the bandit? It could even have been the bandit where I had the whisk can on it. I don't really know. I can't remember. And I've just got a, a, a mandrel bend, some random thing, and obviously my can, which I'm trying to keep nice because it might end up on the bike. <laughs> but anyway, E is going to be going something like that, basically. So I need to hook this to that using nothing but that and maybe a bit of that <laughs> but that is where it is going to go so um we can keep it all nice and tucked in which is good um i still want like 10 mil gap between this and the widest part of the swing arm but he's going to go like that i reckon so um and it is quite a curve isn't it that is quite the curve right okay well, I suppose we start with this end. So this is the, I don't even know what this is off. <laughs> oh, it could be the scorpion thing. I don't know. Anyway, um, we've got this, which is cool. So um, I'm probably gonna be using that end just cause it is a nice snug fit. And it's also got the spring hooks on it, which means that I don't need to, you know, chomp anything about or anything or put a clamp on it like I would do at that end. So I think step one, um, do I need to take that off? Probably. Yeah, probably. Um, we'll, we'll have that, um, oh actually it was a need to. No, we probably don't need to actually, because I can always re-tag that when I come to welding the other bit on. So we've got a couple of spring hooks, which is fine. I think the first thing is to mark this up, chop it off so it's nice and straight, um, and then we sort of go from there really once he's on. Right then, let's uh, mark this up.
Right, I've still got a lot more dressing up to do. I'm not the world's best TIG welder, so I mean, if I could and just leave that perfect stack of pennies, I would do, but it don't come out that way when I do it. <laughs> Apart from that, I just like everything to be smooth. Um, all the frame is getting dressed up, so this is getting dressed up as well. However, it is now gone 10 to one. I need to chip off to my work, so I'll be back. I'm back. <laughs> What is it, Tuesday? Why do I keep doing that? Um, right, so we've sort of dressed it all up. There is still a little bit of dressing up that's left. Um, but I'll do all that when we come to final clean up and everything else, because I don't really know what's going to be happening with this exhaust. But where I've been working this and putting heat into it and grinding and blah de blah de blah that is no longer round. It's not round at all. So we're going to try and make it round again. So I've got these things ages ago. I think this is when I was first mucking about with headers and I wanted to flare a piece of stainless out and I had a go and um, yeah, bits broke off. <laughs> so the little one's junk. I don't even know why it's still in there, but the big one in. All I want to do, I don't want to stretch it. I just want to make it round again. So we'll stick him in there. Essentially, it's just like two cones that close up when you do this bolt up and it forces all the rest of it outwards. So with a little bit of luck, don't break. With a little bit of luck, he's now around again. Ideal, right. Well, they're, they're not as, as poo as you might think, but they're not very good, like at all. Um, you can go in the bin, actually. I don't even know why I'm keeping you. Right. Let's um, put all this back and see if we can't figure out the next bit. Right. He's on there. Um, all right then. Okay, so it's weird actually because this run of the exhaust kind of follows that line. But I want the can to come up like that to follow this line. So it kind of, it's best of both worlds. This is too long though. He needs to be tucked in. If I stick him on like that, um, Got clearance to the swing arm, which is nice, but I need to shorten this down. Probably chop a section out like that. That is going to send it closer in board, I think. But then it's also going to be tipped up a little bit more. Um, I could see me having to use this. <laughs> it's tricky, isn't it? It is tricky. Um, right, I think I'm going to have this off and I'm just going to cut a section out the middle because I need to send this that way. I can also take these little spring jobby things off because um, ultimately it's going to be split down here. And in the end, it's all going to be welded on because I want that this to be part and parcel of the link pipe so I can bolt it on here and it's not just going to flop about all over the place as it might do with a clamp or springs because I don't want to have a, a big, you know, brackety jobby down there. Um, but chopping that out is going to send it in. I could rotate this, but then I'd lose that line there. But I also don't want to put a dog leg in it. <laughs> right, let's... Um, we'll just cut it up and see what happens. Thank you. 
What I do apologise if the sound on this bit is junk, but the battery on my microphone went dead, so he's now plugged into an extension lead. Hopefully you can hear stuff. But so we we sort of get in there, and I might change my mind just a little bit. So I've chopped up my mandrel bend. I've also had the spring hooks off the end can, and also slit it down it. This is in there properly bloody tight. You have to grunt a lot to twist it, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but those little slits, that's where it's going to get TIG welded over. There is nothing as far as exhaust gases like coming back this way out of that joint. That'll be fine, but it'll mean all this is one lump. So I can basically tie this to the back of the foot peg. He wants to go about like that, I think. So it's sort of following this line. But I need to put a jog into this to join up to the link pipe. I might be chopping that off and moving it around again. I don't really know. I don't really want to, but it looks like it lines up pretty level that way. And I can always clock this if I need to, a little bit. Um, but I think what I need to do is to find the middle of that bend, chop it straight down there, turn it 90 degrees. Because um, I reckon that's going to get us pretty bloody close. Um, there'll be loads of clearance for the torque arm and suspension but everything's all tucked in and it comes out nice and sort of parallel with the side of the bike if that makes sense so that is what I think I'm going to do we'll just have a little jog in there which would be fine and because this comes out at an angle what's probably going to end up doing is when I split it I'm going to have to sort of wheedle it back until it marries up with this because that's not a 90 degree angle whereas obviously this is so, still work to be done. However, it is now five to one. I need to chip off to new work uh, again. So I'll be back. And I'm gonna put him on charge as well. <laughs> I'm back. I'm just sitting my thing. <laughs> it's now Wednesday. I completely forgot this week and next week's a four day week. Ideal. Right, so. What I'm going to do, I've been mucking about and mocking stuff up and blah, 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 blah. I think we're in, but I think what I need to do is to split this mandrel bend right down the middle. Because I need to put a jog into it, like that, like a like an S shape. So I need to split this in half. Now, um, I've got a cab model for a, um, uh, a jig that I'm going to be making for the bandsaw. But I also need to make a plinth for the bandsaw because the thing that I've got on it is just a bent up bit of tin that's rubbish. So I need to make like a proper plinth for it, like a proper platform that you can work on. And once I've got that, then I can also get this jig done. However, for now, this is going to do. Let me show you how I'm doing it. All right, we need them in a minute. Okay, this isn't necessarily the best way of doing it, but um, can you see? Yes, you can. Um, this is the way I'm choosing to do it. So my angle finder jobby, where are you? I've set him to 45 degrees. Hopefully you can see that. Because this is a 90, I just want to split it in two. Um, either way, even if this isn't a full 90, or it's you know over or whatever, it really doesn't matter. Because when we mark it and chop it, if I then get the bit I've chopped off and just clock it around, it should all still marry up. So this is 51 mil. This is an inch high. So, near enough in the middle, um, we're going to need a sharpie. And the idea is, is that with the ruler at the same, with the protractor at the same height as the centre line of the tube, you have a squish the two together like that, so this edge is flat against the straight bit, and wherever it touches down here, you want to get the middle bit, so he's about there. Like that. Um, now, full disclosure, I did do this before. And I used a really chunky cable tie um, and it threw it off a little bit so I'm using slightly skinnier ones like this and the idea is, is that you put a cable tie around and I'm going to need two because he's not quite long enough brilliant um, put a cable tie around it snug him up and then if there's my mark, you move the cable tie around until he's on your mark. Now, you do get a little bit of wiggle to it. And you have to sort of eyeball it and get it as good as you can. Um, but to me, that looks like it goes straight 
through that curve to where the centre point would be. Do you imagine that was just a complete circle? The centre point of that arc is where the cut line needs to, to head for. So from my mark on the outside, straight through the middle to the centre point. And that way, when you chop it, you'll be able to clock these and it'll all marry up and be true. And it should come out as a 180 degree run again. Um, should. But that's what I'm doing. So, with me Sharpie, I'll put a cut line down there. Like that. Lose the cable tie. Um, where's my cutters? Cutters! There we go. There's going to be loads of different ways of doing this, and this isn't a how to channel, but it's not a bad way of doing it. Not a bad way of doing it. Right, let me get the bandsaw set up. I am going to make a jig for that, just because it will take all the guesswork out of it. That method. You know, I mean, it will get you close. It will get you close. Is it going to be perfect? No. <laughs> but it will get you close. Um, the trouble that I've got is this bandsaw, this, this plinth is just a bent up piece of tin, which is rubbish, like utter junk. Um, what I want is something a bit more like the, you know, like the pedestal on, on the, the pillar drill. Something a bit sturdier would be good. Um, but it's a case of where you actually come off to mount the bloody thing and have it all, you know, sort of flat and square and true and all that sort of stuff. Because although it's cast, you could probably come into this bit, I suppose. So something over there, but then, you know, <laughs> where else would you come off? Well, I suppose you could come down here, support it on either side. But anyway, I've got this model for a CAD. Um, yeah, this CAD model rather for a, a plinth and it will have like a, a fence on it as well. So if I get it all set up, then it's just going to take the paint out of cutting tube and anything else that I want that's dead straight. Um, but for now, we're just working with what we got. <laughs> Well, I ended up using the cut-off disc in the end because the bandsaw blade is just junk. It is utter junk. Which one goes in where? I think you go in this one, don't you? Right. He's tight. Tight. Bloody hell, he is tight. <laughs> right, I need to sit down. He is properly tight in there. <laughs> right, okay, this should be getting us a bit closer. So, if he's going to be... I've still got a little bit of a gap here. This will go down about 10 mil. I want him about there. And I want to join that to that. And as you can see, this bit is sticking out towards you a bit too much. But the rest of it looks like it's lining up. So sort of not too bad really. So I think what we need to do is to start whittling this end down. So I'm going to start taking little chunks out of this. I'll do the, the cable tie trick again. We'll take a bit more off and we'll just keep offering it up um, until we get it somewhere sort of right. Um, it's not a huge amount. I think we just need to sneak up on it, if I'm honest. Right. Right tiny little bit of a wibble to it on that so really I want to stick this on the linisher and just flatten it all out but I need another belt for that everything is wearing out in my workshop <laughs> <laughs> that's close enough right um, I've been going through a few cable ties and stuff <laughs> I keep nibbling bits off you just end up taking all these little it's, it's just like a little pie cut basically and they're not very really big, but I would rather sneak up on it and get it cock on than, um, you know, just trash a bit of mandrel bend, which costs an awful lot more than cable ties, and uh, have to start all over again. Right, that's, um, we should be getting close now, actually. Right, this is just getting awkward now, because you've got old two bits and try and get it all lined up. But... Right. 
Right, that's a nice fit up. I can easy weld that. So he's going to go on there. It is going to be too far back. Um, and he is going to stand out a little bit too far, but that's basically parallel. Right, I think we're onto something there. That is not a bad fit up. Um, thing is, as I, I need to shorten this one down to obviously bring the can down so this bit is like right behind the, the lever. I want it about like that. Um, so we do have a bit to chomp off. Uh, and I've also got, this isn't all the way in, and this connecting bit here, he could probably move forwards a little bit, but it's so flaming tight, it really, really is. Um, so, I think what I'm gonna do is cut it a little bit long. I don't know, we'll sort of chomp it down to about there-ish, knowing that it has to move in. As it does move in, as this goes forwards, um, it's obviously gonna pull the can in, um, and as the can gets pulled in, it's also going to move that way just a little bit. You know, not a lot, but it will a little bit, because obviously that gap there is shortening up. So we've got about, I don't know, what, it's a finger's width behind it, clearance between the can and the swing arm. So I reckon we probably want to take, oh, I don't know, we'll cut it long. And again, we'll just keep sneaking up on it. Take about an inch off. Ain't gonna be that far off, I don't think. Right. I think we're in. I do think we're in. <laughs> I think that is it. Um, I need to shove this end can further onto this tube. We are getting close to the bend, but it's still on a straight bit. It's just really tight in there. So I'm probably gonna get that expandy thing and just open this bit out again. Um, but if I put him on the, this is only tacked on in four places and they're very small tacks. Um, but if I get him to bottom out on that join there and get sort of lined up with that thing on the frame, it leans out just a little bit, but only a little bit. And a little bit, I don't mind. Um, I don't know if we're gonna get it totally parallel anyway, but that I think is where we need it. Something like that. Is he in the right place? Yes, so we'll get a mark on here. <sighs> I need another set of hands, that's what I need. Yeah. Alright, so about there ish. 
Everything clears the lever, we're clearing the swing arm. So that's where he's going. Like that. Oh, come on. Right, we're using. We're using. You on your marks. Yes, you are. Ideal. Um, right, that's it. That's how it's going to be. <laughs> I reckon. Um, we clear all the levers and stuff. That's not an issue. Um, we're going to clear the torque arm for the rear brake. Um, I've got literally 10 mil clearance between the end can and the swing arm. And it basically, if it does kick out a little bit, um, whereas really I wanted to have it parallel, but if, to, to do that, I've got to send this link pipe further this way. And I don't really want to do that because your foot's going here. And I don't want you resting your foot on the can or, you know, tapping on the, the link pipe when, <laughs> when you're shifting your foot position. So it has to be tucked in. So that's why it's got a little bit of a kick out to it. But it's fine. It's not horrible. I will get some pictures and show you around it and whatnot. But that's how it's going to be. So here, there is going to be a little bracket that comes off the link pipe up to the back of the footrest hanger, same as we did on the other one. You're going to see, I don't know, 30 mil of it, 25 mil, which is bugger all. You're just going to lose it in all this, this alley and that anyway. Um, so he's going to be fixed at the front of the collector. He's going to be fixed here to the, the, the back of the footrest hanger. And where I've put these slots in the end can, that's just going to get tigged over and then dressed back just to be like a seamless tube. There will be a step to it, don't really care. You know, it's not obnoxious, it's not horrible like a big clamp. But I'm definitely running with this can and not the little wish can. Um, I know it's a second exhaust and people are probably going to run it with the other one anyway, but I prefer the look of like the brushed, you know, to the stickered on carbon fibre looking thing that the wish can's got. And this has got a DB killer in it. So, if anything, this is the one that's going to hit 99 decibels. <laughs> I'm still not sure it's going to do it, but it stands a better chance than that one. So, what I've decided to do is, uh, we're going with this can, and if, it, if it's close to 99 decibels, which I will be checking with Simon's dB meter, then that's how it's going in for the MSVA. I don't really care. I don't know how calibrated that one is, so theirs could read quieter. I don't know. You know, and I don't know how lenient they're going to be on it or, you know, anything like that. So we're just going to give it a whirl and see. If it fails, it fails and we have to have a rethink. But, um, so what's going to come next is all this needs to get welded up, which will be the next one. And then everything needs to go back on. So um, Crispy's already got me a set of 110 jets, uh, which I need to go and pick up tomorrow. Um, but I'm going to be putting 110s instead of 114s back in the carbs. Rebuild all that lot and stick them back in. Um, pod filters will go on. All this lot is going to get burned up. I'll make the little bracket and that will be you know, set down and sorted and whatnot. I need to start routing wiring as well. So where I've done this number board thingy, the indicators, you know, I want to run the wires around, hook it up to the M unit and the switch gear and all that stuff, and just make sure it all bloody works. Um, switch gear's not here yet. Don't know where that is. <laughs> but I know the buttons I'm going for. I just, you know, I'm just waiting on them. So when they come, I can sort out the, the handlebars. So the front brake reservoir jobby, he's going to need to be changed. I need to make another one just because of spacing, because I've got the quick action throttle and stuff. Now, you know, just bits and pieces like that, really. Um, the brakes is all going to go on with lines. We'll get all that lot bled up and see what's what. And then I need to sort out a switch for the kickstand. There was somebody who mentioned, I can't remember what bike it is, but he was saying like the pivot bolt is, is like the the kickstand switch. Um, to, I'm sorry, there's like a squillion comments. I can't go back and read them all and I don't know which video it was in. Um, but if it was you, could you drop a comment to this video and just let me know what the bike was so I can go and have a look see and see if it's gonna work. Um, I don't know if it works on like a ramp so as it comes down, it moves the kickstand out and that's how come it throws, I don't know. Um, but I need to get something sorted there. And it's just, just things like where's the horn going to live and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Get the wiring finished off. And then really the last bit of fabrication is the 
is the seat unit. I know what I'm doing there. I have been looking into it. I do know what I'm going to do and I'll tell you in the next update. So that's all fine. Um, I'm on holiday from 22nd to 29th of April. Um, and we got two four day weeks coming up because we've got bank holidays. So I am hoping, really, really, really hoping to have all this lot done and enough built up so it's back as a run. I don't really care about breaks and stuff, but I want to have a chat with Crispy and see when we can next get booked in for a dyno session because that is probably going to be the last session. Um, and we've got a few options. I haven't got any velocity stacks, I've not had a chance to make any. Uh, Matt hasn't printed me one out either, so but we wouldn't be running with that anyway. Um, so we've already got um, the exhaust that I made that can go on and we can try that. We've got this one without a DB killer, we got it with a DB killer, and we've also got it with a DB killer wrapped up in exhaust blanket. So, and I want to check all of them, but the most important thing is that the fuel in is right between three and a half to seven because it's lean at the minute. Um, whatever power it makes, it makes, as long as it's usable power and the curve's all nice, I'm happy. Um, and then we'll see what Mr. MSVA says about getting close to 99. <laughs> but anyway, there you go, that's where I'm going to leave it for this one. That's my exhaust, or second exhaust. Um, I just need to finish it up now. But thank you ever so much for watching. I do hope you're well and staying safe. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.